Hello John. Hello Oliver. We've discussed this before, today we're going to talk about abortion and repeal the 8th. There's a lot of hysteria in the media. Um, it reminds me of the hysteria of the LGBT referendum. Correct. Um, and, but I think you've something to say about that. Go ahead. Yes. Um, a referendum is going to occur in this country, Ireland, in the 20, on, on the 25th of May for coming, about six weeks' time. Now, there was already a referendum to protect the mother and child on, uh, in 1983, which was passed by a majority of two to one. It's not that long ago in legal terms, uh, but this government it does not respect democracy, and so it's pushing for to bring in and promoting abortion on demand and ab an abortion of a potential child up to 12 weeks of its in the womb of the mother. Unrestricted and in some cases even further along the line. It is one of the most liberal and uh, won't use the word liberal. It's the most it's one of the most abominable uh, proposals for abortion in the Western world. Okay. Um, so back in 1983, Dermot Ferreter, I quote him, he says, The abortion mills of England grind Irish babies into blood that cries out to heaven for vengeance. Correct. Um, Irish women have been going to Britain for abortions. Uh, this government and the pro-abortion lobby, the pro-choice as they call themselves, including regretfully women's organisations, particularly one that gets funds from the government and should be promoting life and respecting the 1983 uh, constitution until such time as uh, uh, people have another chance to vote on it and in actual fact they should first of all respect the 1983 uh, referendum and not seek to sort of change that and promote something which results in the potential debt of thousands of potential Irish citizens. Some people would argue that that was then 1983 and this is now but death was the same in 1983. Well, precisely. Now, the media and the government, and when I say the media, TV, radio and print, are nearly all promoting uh, this repeal of the Eighth Amendment, which uh, is going to result in abortion on demand, as I've just said. Now, it is not in that sense, a fair, reasonable debate. If you have the organs of the state and the, and, and the, and the media uh, pushing this agenda, where is the voice for to protect life, which the pro-life and various other organisations uh, are seeking to uh, protect and uh, are having a tough job doing it because of the lack of support that they receive in the media and certainly the lack of support that they uh, receive in this government that were saddled with. Okay. Are there any circumstances where abortion, in your opinion, should, should be legal, should be allowed? Well, you see, it's not legal to murder a citizen. Uh, that's why we have a law to to protect citizens, uh, that they can't be murdered. But why should that most innocent people in the womb, why should it be okay to murder those? Uh, they use euphemisms like uh, a woman's choice and that. Um, they're putting women into a corner without giving them the sort of advice, uh, because this is a potential human life. So, to to be so, so, so promoting uh, the idea that women should get rid of the babies that they might potentially have 
uh, is is not uh, a very decent thing to do. So it all together from the Christian, the Catholic or the Christian point of view, which supports life, even from a common sense point of view, it seems incredible that any government, women's organisations, would promote such a course of action, which is tantamount to ending the life of a potential citizen of this country. They also create a kind of a distance from the reality, the grim reality of abortion, by calling the baby a fetus. Well, you see, uh, this is a medical term, and this is what the pro-choice and the, and, and, the, and the government keep talking about it. We have a Minister for Children, a Canadian-born person, Catherine Zappone, uh, who does not respect the, the, the democratic view in 1983, which supported the life of the mother and the child, which has made this country to one of the safest countries in the world in which, uh, for women to have children. Uh, this, is, this narrative has not been supported. It is quite clear uh, that uh, the, the government here should be actually respecting the vote that the people took in 1983, and that is still the law. So they want to flip the law and uh, bring in uh, abortion, which is the killing of innocent children in the womb. If it's, if it's illegal to kill a person that's born, like infanticide, which it was uh, a potential problem years ago and which was considered a, a mother of the most foul kind. Uh, why is it that it's, in one sense, they're promoting uh, the killing of potential citizens and babies that are in the womb and putting women in a very invidious situation and not giving them the advice and the help that they that they need because once they make that decision there's no one going back they cannot sort of say well I'll have the baby that baby has been dis disposed of terminated I'm just, just going to give you a few reasons why people have abortions I mean, we go through each one okay contraception failed is that a reason to have an abortion it certainly is not if you have sexual intercourse with with uh, 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 if a woman has sexual intercourse with a, with a man, uh, irrespective of what precautions that she takes uh, because they're seeking pleasure all the time, instead of having a responsible attitude towards the, the business of uh, relationships with a man, uh, in that sense, uh, she, 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 she's liable to become, uh, uh, become pregnant. And if she does become pregnant, what mindset does is, is the poor woman supposed to have? Does she discuss it with her boyfriend or her husband, as the case might be, or whoever it is? What, what, if, the, if the state and medical, um, the, the medical establishment, now I'm not talking about army doctors, I'm talking about the people that are, that are promoting this, if she's going to be influenced by them, this is a decision that she's taken. And the funny thing is, once she takes that decision to abort the baby, and there's no point in her confusing herself and thinking that it's a fetus, which is the pro-choice description of a baby. Um, she can't go back on that. So she's made, if she makes that decision, the rest of her life is liable to be haunted by that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to stick to the re reasons as well, John. Okay, so yeah. we were saying contraception failed. What about in the case of rape? Well, you, you don't, you see, uh, the, the person that has been raped without her consent, uh, that's a tough decision for that, for that lady. Uh, but the baby is innocent. Yeah. The baby didn't commit the crime. The person who committed the crime was liable to be dealt with very severely by the law. But the woman has a, a choice. Is the baby going to be... Did, he, did the baby, male or female, did they commit a crime? They did not commit a crime. So this puts a, 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 an important decision on the part of the woman. 
uh, I think rather than becoming some ways hysterical about it, uh, wiser counsels need to prevail and I think in a case like that the woman needs to get advice from responsible caring type people uh, that will at least advise her uh, uh, about it because it's a very severe decision to take to, to, to end the life of a potential human being. And, uh, a woman would want to be very careful in that area irrespective of the event or what occurred. The baby didn't commit the crime. Okay, what about people who have psychological and mental health problems and they become pregnant and they feel it's too much for them? Well, you see, whatever psychological and mental problems they might have, and it seems kind of unusual that uh, this mental and psychological problems with people, women that have intercourse with, with men, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just say that they're confused because it's very difficult to think that they would be mentally unstable to that extent. If they're that way inclined, perhaps they should lead a very chaste life. Uh, but in any event, whatever confusion they might have before they terminate the baby in the womb, they'll be far more confused subsequently, if not immediately, certainly down the years. And this narrative is not being highlighted. Anyone concerned, especially this Mr. Harris, the Minister for Health, they'd want to be very careful about promoting this business of abortion, which he has done, and to his eternal shame. You, you, you want to be very careful because when a person, when a person is destroyed, when a potential human being is destroyed, there is no going back from that. Very good, John. <coughs> what about? Um Older women, I mean a lot of women nowadays are having children at an older age, some of some are up to 45. I actually know, personally know a woman who had a baby at 50. Okay, right. But some people would fear that the child is handicapped, so therefore it would be best maybe, they think, to abort the baby. The trouble with that is that um, there is no full guarantee that the baby might be deformed or that there might be, uh, it, it might be as healthy as one would obviously wish. Uh, but the thing is that it's a baby, it, like any baby deserves to be born. Um, because irrespective of the condition, medical or otherwise, of the potential person, uh, the child in the womb, um, it doesn't deserve to be annihilated or incinerated or whatever method is taken uh, that uh, results in the in the killing of this uh, potential person. Okay. So Simon Coveney, Simon Coveney is now pro-abortion. Well, you see, this is the Minister for Foreign Affairs in the Fianna Gael government with the support of Fianna Fáil uh, in this supply arrangement. Uh, of course, uh, the leader of Fianna Fáil is also on the same side as Simon Coveney. Uh, he, uh, unfortunately for him, has decided to support the government proposal uh, to bring in abortion, that is the killing of potential citizens, babies in the womb, on demand. Now, it's a very serious step to take. There is no going back. Now, one hopes that this referendum to introduce, or as they call it, to repeal the Eighth Amendment, uh, if people take that decision, there's no going back. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think you were saying earlier you can repeal a law but you can't repeal a death. Is that the way you put it? Correct. You yeah. can repeal a law. For example, the law on the so-called LGBT, LGBT referendum. marriage between two men or two women has, has been repealed in one country. Uh, in other words, uh, it's the traditional view of marriage between a man and a woman 
is what now is in the, in one country and it's liable to occur in other countries because a lot of countries don't have a same-sex uh, marriage referendum. It turns out that the EU, uh, this political entity now, instead of this economic uh, co cooperation entity as it was in the beginning, uh, they seem to be promoting this um, um, business of uh, killing the baby in the womb uh, and calling it, uh, uh, you know, calling it abortion. It's the killing of a baby in the womb. So uh, they're putting pressure on Poland and some other countries that 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 don't go down this particular road. Uh, so uh, they're a, 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 not a force for good. Obamacare sought to widen abortion. You were saying. That's right. Uh, they, 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 it, it, it got uh, naturally a great support from the media who appeared to be clueless as regards the, protect, the protection of human life. Uh, so uh, he sought to widen it and, and put pressure on uh, Catholic, particularly Catholic institutions and Catholic adoption agencies that heretofore uh, had, had uh, uh, views on this, that they didn't support this business of abortion and they were obliged then to give advice to, to people against uh, their whole eat, uh, against their whole religion and ethos. They, they wish to protect life so they were getting pressure uh, without any support from the media. When Mr Trump uh, went and succeeded in becoming president he changed all that and, and, and did away with Obamacare because it had this tendency which of course we don't hear from the media too much about that implication of this uh, promoting abortion in a more wider, a wider avenue. Okay, you, you mentioned Neve O'Brien or Breen. Neve O'Brien. O'Brien is it? Okay. Yeah. She gave an interview on Sky, Sky News. She did recently and she was very good. Um, uh, she, she, uh, the Sky of course are pro-abortion, uh, i.e. pro the killing of potential citizens uh, in Britain and other countries, wherever they have influence. Uh, so she dealt very straightforward and robustly with the interviewer from Sky and put her on notice uh, that uh, she wasn't going to be bamboozled by her or anyone. Uh, and she did a, a great job and of course uh, uh, she had to be listened to about the correspondent on Sky, the woman correspondent. And of course, uh, the person in, that was pro-abortion, or pro-choice as he called it, Aidan O'Reardon, Senator Aidan O'Reardon, a former minister, uh, minister for state in the infamous Fine Gael Labour government, with a large majority, he sought to, uh, you know, former headmaster, uh, he, he sought to uh, uh, insist that priests in the confession uh, should divulge anything that might uh, implicate um, uh, people by way of uh, uh, crimes against women or whatever it might be. Uh, so he, his views, he was on the sky uh, promoting the abortion and he was referred to in very nice terms by the correspondent as if like his views should receive such support when they were absolutely <coughs> abominable in the sense that they were for the for the killing of, a, of potential citizens in the womb. The role of men in, in, in production, reproduction, sorry, um, is increasingly being diminished. Should fathers be consulted or should they even be notified? Well, they certainly should be consulted and notified. We'll take it that uh, it could be a husband, it could be a boyfriend that has been uh, having sexual relations with a woman and, uh, and uh, the woman becomes pregnant. Now, uh, she should discuss it with, 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 uh, with the boyfriend. If he was any type of uh, decent human being, uh, he would not want uh, uh, a child that he might have, that the woman conceived with his uh, seed. Uh, he, he, if he was normal, he wouldn't want that, to be a, that child to be a part of. Uh, to be killed. So that's number one, he should be consulted. But if he is so um, lost as regards responsibility 
at that night, the night will fight, it might interfere with the comfort that he feels he, he, he's enjoying and this freedom of practicing sexual relations with, with a woman uh, with outside marriage. Well then, he, he has to, um, if, he, if he supports the killing of the child, for example, well the woman then should not um, respect that uh, opinion. She should seek good, decent opinions from responsible type people that will give her the type of advice and that will enable her to make a decision and a proper decision to protect the potential child in her womb and not to be go down the road of thinking that it's a fetus or whatever else the pro-choice and pro-abortion lobby choose to call it. It's a potential child, a potential citizen. Uh, so she should be very careful uh, to take the child that she has in her womb very serious. Okay. You mentioned when we were, we were talking earlier on about um, children in, in, in the womb that are handicapped. Uh, they might have some handicap, might be mild, they might be severe. And you mentioned Andrea Bocelli. That's right. His mother was advised to abort the child that she was carrying. They might have called it a fetus in, 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 this in Italy, they might have called it something uh, that takes away its humanity. And she decided to proceed and have the child. And it was Andre Bocelli, the famous tenor. Now, he's blind, but what a marvellous voice. The talent that that man has has brought comfort and joy to millions throughout the world. Uh, to think that he could have been killed before he was born. That's an example of the type of potential citizen that might be annihilated. John, in, in light of the uncertainty regarding, I mean, in people's minds, especially young people, young women, um, do you think that if people are uncertain, that maybe they should just vote no, because they'll always have an option in the future to, um, to vote again? That's right. I think if you don't know, for one reason or another, or you're being bamboozled by the media, <coughs> you've, you've, you've got a decision, and if you have a vote, it's a very important decision. You will not be able to go back on it. If you vote for the termination of potential life, irrespective of what the media or the government choose to call it, you can't go back on that decision. This is the potential killing of a potential child. You're born, you weren't aborted. You weren't molded before you were a chance of being born. So think about that. Young people have a certain idealistic approach and can kind of, to, to not being fully informed in the pros and cons of the situation, can make a decision that they will not be able to go back on. So that's the danger. So the best thing, the safest thing that, that, that they can do, because they have a conscience, we all have a conscience. Sometimes we make decisions and we regret them, but in the business of uh, this uh, abortion referendum, they can call it the repeal of the eighth, but that protects the mother and child. So they want to be very careful and vote no rather than the, the voting yes, which they cannot go back on, and by goodness, they could be responsible for the murder of, of, of countless children. In this country at the moment, if abortion had been brought in in 1983, there'd be about upwards of 100,000 children that's born that would not have been born. Well. Because in where this abortion occurs, 90% or more of the people that are killed before they have a chance of being born, are normal human beings, not all handicapped. And the idea that abortion should be brought in because, because of, for any reason whatsoever, should be resisted. So to repeat the mantra, you can repeal a law, but you can't repeal a death. Correct. You can repeal a law, but you cannot repeal a death. It's a, it's a responsibility, and I think Irish people have a decent fundamental respect for life. And I think that I hope they vote 
to, to against this uh, destruction of potential citizens, vote against it, at least uh, they can then, as they get ordered, and be in a better position if they wish to go down that road again. But if they go down this road and succeed in this business of bringing in abortion, because that's what it'll be, the killing of our innocent children. It's an awesome responsibility and I would expect young people that have a, a decent idea of what's right and wrong to, to make a decision along what's right and not what's wrong. Thank you very much, John Logan. Thank you very much, Oliver.